This is my Telefunken model concertino 7. I restored this radio in Germany uh, many years ago and I've since uh, brought it out from uh, retirement and it's not working entirely correctly. We're going to go through it. As far as restorations go, this is one of the few radios where I actually did the woodwork on. I've completely restored uh, this veneer. This, this wood was completely destroyed and, and I did this woodwork. I'm not a woodworking person so this is uh, a rarity. There are only a couple of radios out there that I've actually done the chassis and this is one of them. One of the first things I noticed firing it up and, and I did use the Variac of course when I brought it up. There was a long process to get this radio going again. Uh, the Magic Eye tube is not working. There's no response at all. Not that it's weak, there's nothing. The other thing I noticed was aside from uh, AM broadcast band right here uh, I'm not getting anything else and I am getting it and it's good you know which tells me there's a lot of stuff working here but it also tells me a lot of stuff that isn't we're gonna fire this radio up we're gonna go through a demonstration of what we've got right now let's start by turning it on letting it warm up and I do hear a residual hum in the background Time. I this is AM Forty compressor oil in my tube. Our compressor. When he's around other openly gay men, he feels. Like Stories about the character Henry Beck and his novel. I'll use this channel to show he that the the base in trouble work. He won the Pulitzer Prize, the National Book Award, and trouble. National Book Critics Circle Award. But he tried to keep a relatively low public profile and, here's the base. and was reticent to reveal much about his personal life to his readers until he wrote his memoir. In the opening paragraph, he explained why he uncharacteristically chose so himself. So those functions work. If I move to other um, frequencies, like right here, shortwave. Now I'm on shortwave. I'll turn up the volume and you can hear a hum. There's a no noticeable hum. And, and, and a scratching. I don't hear static that tells me that it's actually a station. Like, like not a station, but that I'm actually picking up something from the air. Nothing. Just the knob itself is making the noise. See? I'll go to middle wave. A middle wave, I do hear static. Yes. Indeed, there is there is something on middle wave. So we'll say that middle wave is at least working, if not optimally, but at least we're getting something. Wave is actually AM, uh, 1600 to 520. This is AM. And this is long wave. So this is 340 to 145. And I've got nothing on that. Does anybody broadcast on that anymore? There's a question too. But one thing is true about all these, there's nothing on the magic eye. And uh, I'm gonna have to look at the schematic and see what's going on. In opening the cover, I, I immediately see that this can be good. This is the rotating antenna and it's come loose from its mount. And how much has disconnected, I have no idea. This is definitely a, a starting point for troubleshooting. Uh, no wonder it was making so much noise. Um, this is gonna be the first thing I'm gonna look at and see how much of the radio itself is restored with functionality. I'm going to forego looking at the Magic Eye tube for now because we have a known issue um, as opposed to uh, what could possibly be causing the other issue. So we're stopping right here, uh, move on with this, then we'll go to something like filter caps and then finally we'll go to voltages on the Magic Eye. So it wasn't damaged. I checked the wire connector, they're so good. It snaps back in right here, which I've already snapped it back in. 
and this side simply seats. So I'm just going to put this metal shielding back over it and this should be okay. I'm going to try the radio out again and see if there was any improvement. Not only did I get it back together, but um, I lubricated uh, both of these shafts with REM oil. There's actually a switch here that opens up when it's in the full open position. And now that I've uh, loosened it up with REM oil, this string actually works. It was just slipping and it was only moving it uh, a certain degree and then it would just turn the string until the string stopped and wasn't actually working. But now it is, I'll, I'll demonstrate. We're turning it all the way and then the contact opens and when I release it, turn it the other way and back. So this is worth uh, stopping and, and rechecking the radio, so I'm going to do that now. Now just start with FM for a second because it's a known good and it's working okay. I got the volume really low so I could talk over it. So now we're going to move um, to Kurzwelle, so shortwave, and presented with a couple options now because if we look on the knob, that little clicking that I have also has a little symbol there, see, after one. So I wonder if that also makes a difference. I do not know yet. So we're going to find out, KW, and I'll try both settings. So. It shows that it's using the loop antenna down. I'm going to turn the volume all the way up. With their powerful, powerful and it looks like it looks like shortwave is working now. That, that's good enough for me, but let's see if there's any anything that changes when I rotate this. It's very interesting. Let's try a uh, middle wave. See what we get from this. And this is most definitely using the directional ferrite antenna. You could hear that. So I could tune the station in for maximum signal. Right there. And now with the ferrite. So there you go, directional antenna. Not a whole lot of stations here. I mean, it, it is AM. Yeah, so directional is working for uh, AM, middle wave. I guess we'll try long wave now, super low frequency. I just don't think there's anything broadcasting on 
340 kilohertz. I tell you, that's a really noisy hum though. I can't tell you if that's being picked up or if that is just being emanated from the filter capacitors themselves. Let's try different come off frequency. You can hear that. If I lower the volume though, we get the actual hum. I'll bring the uh, phone up to it. There's a very light hum. Just slightly audible. And I know that's coming directly from the filter capacitor, so I got the volume all the way down. And as far as the amplifier, you know, through, through several stages, you could hear sort of different, different harmonics of a hum that's coming through here. So, so bad filter capacitors, leaky, leaky electrolytics all around. But now we got to take a look at this thing, see what's going on with this too. This is not an easy radio to remove from the chassis. I found no other way uh, to get at this tube in a convenient fashion. Besides, I have to test electrolytic capacitors anyway and do other stuff. So this was going to happen. Uh, note that uh, this tube, this radio would not be um, uh, calibrated outside the chassis. It would all be put back in before any of these uh, coils would be adjusted. Uh, but as far as these capacitors go, uh, some of them are definitely worse for wear. So, yeah, this was going to happen. Might as well be right now.